Hi, thank you for checking out the How To Letter Comics YouTube channel uh, presented by First Draft Press and hosted by me, Marshall Dillon. Uh, a little bit about myself, I've been in the comics industry since 1994. I've done everything in comics except actually draw a comic. I've done inking, coloring, writing, editing, uh, everything on the business side. I've worked with distributors and printers, all that jazz, but primarily I make my living lettering comic books, uh, most recently uh, for DC Comics and for Heavy Metal Magazine, but also for Image Comics, Dark Horse, uh, lots of different companies. And I've worked with lots of partners outside of the industry as well, like the BBC and Premier League football, soccer for Americans, um, and, you know, the U.S. Army, Department of Health, stuff like that. All right, thanks for your time and uh, enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. Uh, or you can reach me through the website, firstdraftpress.net. There's contact information there. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers. Here we have the lettering template. Again, it's available from firstdraftpress.net. Uh, it's 30 bucks, um, which is pretty affordable, and it comes with fonts. So some of the fonts included here are my MDVMKEX optical kerning font. Uh, we can just call it MDVMKE for short. Anyway, it's available in regular and italic and bold italic. Um, all those are included along with everything you see here on the template. Um, so here we have standard balloon. It's a very standard US balloon with a very standard tail. Um, here's a caption box, which will be used for voiceovers. Here's a different style balloon. Uh, it's got a rougher appearance to it and a roughened caption box. Uh, I can show you how to do all that stuff probably in another video, but I want to run through a couple things here on this template first. Um, oh, just since we're here right now. Uh, so this is a thought balloon, which I built. This is the raw building blocks of the, of the thought balloon. So I'm going to move some elements out of the way so you can see what we've got here. We've got two different um, pattern outlines applied to overlapping shapes. If you take both of those and you go object, expand appearance, ungroup it with control shift G and uh, unite it with the Pathfinder tool and then hit the letter D to give it a black stroke, set that stroke to overprint and set the stroke to rounded edges, you get a basic thought balloon. Um, yeah, and so then we'll take these elements and we'll lay them back over top. And you can see that's not a bad thought balloon. Thought balloons aren't used much anymore, but uh, I like them a lot more than standard captions. Here's another thing to do. Uh, select everything with Control-All and go over here to the Attributes panel and click Show Center. What that does is it allows you to see the center point, which here is depicted by a little blue little blue square there. That lets you see that you're actually centered with the text. Um, go by the visual center of the text, not the red dot in the middle of the text. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to zoom in. and I want to center that right between the second and third line. So I'll just grab that and just nudge it up a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, if it looks off with your eyes, you might need to make other adjustments. I'm going to make this a little bit tighter because that's the way I like my balloons. And we'll just throw this on here as if it were actually going to a character. So that's how I do my thought balloons. Um, usually italic, but that's up to you or your editor. I'll go ahead and delete that. So in this template, we have multiple layers. The first layer is the art layer, where you will place your artwork. Then there's the bottom balloon layer, the tails layer, the top balloon, the letters layer, and then my guide layer. So I'll turn off the guide. You see what that turns on and off. And these objects are set to um, have a transparency blend on them. So when you place artwork under them, you'll see through them. But it will indicate what's in the trim area and what's in the... Uh, in outside of the safe area. Everything in the white box here is in the safe area. The yellow orange color is not quite safe area and then this reddish pink color everything there will get trimmed off when the book is printed. 
I keep that layer locked uh, so you don't accidentally bump it around. Um, okay, so I'll show you the construction of a balloon here. I'm just going to alt drag this one over. So here we've got just the text. And you can see that is on the letters layer. And then I've got this top balloon, which is on the top balloon layer, and that's just set to white. The bottom balloon has a black stroke of two points. That's on the bottom balloon layer, and it's set to overprint. As long as you have a black stroke, it should be set to overprint. Uh, you don't want to overprint any other color strokes. Definitely don't want to overprint anything white. Um, the tail, as you can see, sits above that because it's on the tails layer. And that also has uh, overprint stroke turned on, and it's just a one-point stroke. So we'll bring all this back together. See, that's how that's, how that's all built. Um, you can manipulate these pretty easily. So if you, you click the... Uh, a button, which gives you the direct selection tool. You can click and drag over the top and bottom there on one side, and you can use your arrow keys to nudge this into a more circular shape. I'll do the same on this side. So if you want a circle, or if you want sort of a more bubble, bubbly looking traditional comic balloon, that's how you do that. Uh, you can also do it sideways if you like. Um, sometimes you might need to do that for a little bit of finessing in panel. Or if you like a really square-ish balloon, you can kind of get there that way, too. All of which are good options, just depends on what you want. Now, with the tail, um, there are a couple things I want to show you here. The tail is built up of three nodes, and there's a little arc on the one side of the tail and a bigger arc on the other side of the tail. This allows you, when you need to, to give more curvature like this um, and it allows you to sort of stretch it out when you stretch it and it gets flat like that you definitely need to add more curvature um, I like a nice a nice curve on both sides um, if you're doing mainstream comics like what I do for DC the sort of backside is usually more straight um, and in fact the tails are more um, flattened so that the uh, butt cap and the miter joint are square which you can see there. Um, for my typical indie comics, I use a rounded approach though, and some people might actually want to use a pointed version like this. Um, the problem with this is that it tends to get very long and it can sort of interrupt the artwork, but if you need that for anything, uh, you can just adjust the miter limit over here. Default is, uh, I think, four, and on this particular balloon, 20 sets it to a point, uh, or this particular tail. Now that miter limit will be different depending on the way these arcs intersect. So that's how that stuff works. Let me show you how we place a piece of artwork. So I'm going to click on the art layer. I'm going to go to File and Place. Now I've remapped this with Control D, which is the place command for InDesign. Um, but that's my personal preference that way when I'm hitting hotkeys in both programs the, the computer behaves as I expect it to. So I'm just going to navigate. This is a book I just did for heavy metal. So I'll place just the first page here. I'm just going to throw it in the middle like that. Okay. Now we want it to line up appropriately so I'm going to use the align tool which is in my case is at the top but you can also go to window and align. And I'm gonna, that pulls up a separate panel. I'm gonna center it and center it. So it's in the center of both the height and the width. Now this works perfectly because the artwork is sized to the appropriate size. Uh, so comics, US comics are 6.875 inches wide by 10.438 inches tall. Um, of that, 1 8 inch gets trimmed off of all sides. Again, that's this orange, red, pink color. Um, yeah, so that's the that's how you place that. Then we'll lock that layer down, and we'll there aren't any figures to work with here, but we'll throw some we'll throw some voiceovers on there. So let's just say we had a couple of characters talking uh, off scene while this was happening. You can see how we would sort of set that up. Um, and I was just alt dragging those. So if you just mouse over it like that click and drag over it, 
press Alt and drag, it makes a perfect copy. Um, you can also, let's see, Alt and, sh and yeah. So if you do Alt and then down arrow, uh, it'll make a copy just one click below it, one click to the bottom, and then you can move that around as needed. Um, so they don't really have any script here, but this is sort of how I would set up a story flow if there were a lot of captions. This actually, this, the actual book didn't have this many. I think it was only about one per panel. And if I remember correctly, I went with something more like, more like this. Um, a, a key thing to remember when lettering is you want to lead the eye with your balloons or captions or sound effects or whatever. So, uh, and you want to read from left to right and from top to bottom. So you get a sort of zigzaggy effect. That's what we want to do. So in part, the background elements here lead our eye in this direction anyway. So we go from our caption one in panel one, this sort of white space leads us to here. Um, you know, this, this one gets tricky because if we only had three panels, we'd get a real easy zigzag. Uh, but in this case, you kind of gotta you kind of gotta go like this if you put it over here your eye would go like this and you would totally skip this other space in here so uh, since we are trained to read from balloon to balloon or caption to caption you kind of have to fudge it a little bit and know that the reader is smart enough to to know where to look next um, but this is a general layout that is pleasing uh, other things in this template are over here this is something that I started using years ago, but uh, just sort of revitalized when I started working for DC. And I've got this on the guide layer, so let's unlock that. So here you can type in the title you're working on. Uh, I'm just going to call this Comic A for uh, something to call it. And I'm going to call this issue number 7, page 16, find lettering template by my name. So in your case, just delete template, and so it'll say lettering by and add your name here. Um, yeah, so that's basically the gist of what we're looking at. Um, when you go to finalize your files and you need to turn them into the client, what you're going to do is you're going to take this guide layer and you're going to delete that. And you're going to take the art layer and delete that. And then what you're giving the company, the client, is just this stuff. This stuff needs to stay there. Uh, this is all the lettering elements. And that way, when they um, do their pre-press stuff, they will probably be working in InDesign. They'll lay the artwork down on one layer in InDesign, and they'll lay your lettering file on top. Um, when you supply that file, you're also going to want to convert your text to outlines. So you select all your text on your pasteboard, do Control-Shift-O, and that converts it to outlines. What that means is this is no longer a font. These are objects. You can tell it by the little nodes all around there and how they move apart separately. When you do that, there's no way to edit this. It's done being editable text. And then you save that after deleting this other stuff. You save that as an EPS, which will just go down here and I'll throw it on my desktop. So that's the, the gist of how that works. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. The, uh, post them in the comment section. Again, the template is available for $30 on firstdraftpress.net in the shop section. So check it out, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.